Um, well, I don't actually know David Hunter, and because now I don't really read up on criminals' activities or what people are doing. Um, if he's been convicted, uh, my thoughts on that, I feel sorry for his family, you know. Um, I feel sorry for all the people that are affected by the, the crimes that they're alleged to have done. I don't know if he's done it or not, I don't know the ins and outs, but anything like that is something that you've got to consider the families and the victims in. So my thoughts on that is my thoughts will go out to all the families that have been affected, really. And that's all I can say, so I don't know the fellow, I don't know the story, I don't know the ins and outs. Yes, I frequently felt them up until I was 19. And then after I was 19, I was styled up to Brixton, Scrubs and Wandsworth. I never done Ballstall. I missed Ballstall by, I think, two months. The closest I got to Ballstall was Rochester, just before Feltham opened. Well, I would say I was a very close friend of Fox. I was a very close associate of Fox. We met in jail. We grew a friendship. There was a mutual respect and understanding. I was saddened when I heard about his death because I know he was actually in the process of turning his life around. But life catches up with the best of us and unfortunately he's no longer here. Rest in peace, my brother. And uh, yeah, it was a sad state of affairs. I feel sorry for his, his missus and the kids. <laughs> oh, you do get some of these trials, don't you? But what can you say, what can you do? I have done. Um, I, I'll talk about that quickly. Um, I used to think I was a real bad man. So uh, I moved to Spain in 2006 and um, I went in the gym one day and one of my mates was in there and there was a young guy in there called, his nickname was The Cat, um, Tielmo. I can't remember his second name, but it was about five foot six, skinny as you like. And uh, someone dared me to get, no, someone had a bet with me to get in the ring and they, they reckon I couldn't last 30 seconds with this kid, right? So they had a five grand bet that I wouldn't last 30 seconds with this kid. So I got in the ring, he was lying on the floor, they said I can kick him, punch him, do whatever I wanted to him. So I was like, are you being serious? So yeah, I, was, I said, all right, sweet. I said, mate, are you sure about this? He's like, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. So I've tried to stick into him, I've gone to kick him and this geezer, I don't know how it happened. I really can't explain how it happened, but he ended up, I kicked him, I felt my foot hit his side while he was lying on the floor, and next thing you know, he's round my legs, threw my legs up, round my neck, put me in a chokehold, had me on the deck, and within 15, 20 seconds, I was on the floor tapping out. And from that day, I started practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with a guy called Carlos Sapatos. And uh, I got okay, I was, I was okay with that. Yes, I have, and I talk about this very openly to everybody, right? So, the criminal world and the legit world are exactly the same. And the legit world is a little bit more unscrupulous and unmoralistic, with no real code. It's just a business code, okay? But where we come from, we have a code of ethics, but the business world is ruthless. So, what I like to let people know is this. There's no difference. The only difference in business and the criminal world is the product. So the criminal world is illegal products which creates legal ripples and in the straight world you've got legal products which doesn't create any ripples. So what I learned in my transition was only to deal with legal products so I can have beneficial ripples and beneficial um, benefits. Yes, I will do a video. Um, it's pretty simple, really. I wake up in the morning, I have um, four bowls of beetroot, a stick of celery, um, well, a bunch of celery, a stick of cucumber, a bit of ginger, and I drink that. And then after that, I'll have um, oatmeal porridge, then I'll go to the gym. Come back from the gym, I have 300 grams of spinach, 600 grams of strawberries, 
blueberries and raspberries combined, half avocado, a handful of almonds, and vegan protein. After I have that, I don't eat anything else for the rest of the day. I have um, green tea or white tea with slices of lemons in it. And then of an evening, I have um, lentils and vegetables. So I season my vegetables like I season meat and fish prior, and I'll just eat vegetables with seasonings of whatever cuisine, whether it's Italian, Chinese, Indian, or West Indian. But I will do a video. I don't know about doing a video, but I will explain right now. Um, basically, I, my body broke apart, my bones broke apart, and I just researched what minerals my body needs to repair itself and what minerals my body needs to get better and be sustainable. And then I found the alkaline diet, no, no dairy, no red meat, no sugar, um, and basically plenty of alkaline water. So that helped me start to recover and how I got strength in my bones, because no products give you calcium. No product, what you eat, drink, or inject will give you calcium. The only thing that will make calcium hard is broken calcium. That's the only thing that recalcifies and generates more calcium. So getting better, I had to break my leg for 18 months continuously. When it was better, I broke it again. I've done that with a friend of mine called Sam, who was living with me for two years after I got shot. And then the diet, the breaking of the leg, and then I got back into boxing training. So all the groundwork you do in boxing, I've done. Um, I couldn't skip, obviously, but I used the rowing machine. Um, rowing machine, swimming, and then um, functional exercises, power clean, power clean squats, power clean presses, um, deadlift, and just every other muscle part after that. Yes, I was talking about Dave Campbell from Berry. Yeah, I'd like that also. I know Akala, I know his family. Um, and he's got a lot of positive stuff to say. And I'd like to amalgamate with Akala to generate a platform to get the kids away from where we were brought up. You know, I was brought up in Camden, the same as Akala and his sister. And uh, we've both been engaged with the same environment, same landscape, difference in um, Achievement is the avenues that he took to educate himself and the avenues I took to educate myself. Mine was a criminal and he was an intellectual. So I'd love to do some work with Akala. So if you're out there, help me out. Yeah, of course I did. Jimmy Mack, I've known for years. I've known Jimmy Mack since he was boxing at St Pancras. He was the older boxers when I first started boxing and he was someone I worshipped, watched and admired growing up. I know him, I know his sons, and I know the rest of his f um, friends and family. Well, I'll take Robert De Niro because of, I just think he's an amazing person, an amazing actor, um, and it's just someone I've always loved seeing on the screen. I'd love to pick his brains, I'd love to have a conversation with him. Mike Tyson, because of his ferociousness and the similarities in our upbringing and the character that he's become now, the character that he was then, I think it'd be an interesting conversation. And Nelson Mandela, because he was a total inspiration to me growing up as an individual and a black man. Um, do you know what? I've spent a lot of quality time with Peter and the family, you know. Um, and it's just family times, sitting in restaurants, in the house, on the beach, in the parks, you know, traveling, like, we're just friends. So I think the fond memories I have is just the, 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 the sort of unity of their family, you know, that's what really stuck out with me. So it's just friends, family, and I've, I've always respected the way they stick together as a family. In all fairness, they're all as sort of as bad as each other um, because all the acts are equally the same. People get stabbed, people get shot, people get killed, people go to prison. So every firm, every group has that same association. 
but I can say that the people that sort of made an impact in my life more than anyone, good and bad, is the Irish. So I think drugs should be legalised. Yes, I do believe drugs should be legalised because once they legalise drugs, there won't be no street trade. Um, the street trade will dissipate and everybody will, will have to adapt. So the crime rate, I believe, will drop, not instantly, but over time. And it will drop because now most of the crimes are drug related, like thieving, burglaries, robberies. It's all drug related because every major villain always ends up taking loads of drugs. And every major villain ends up recovering from drink or drugs or some form of abuse. So legalizing drugs is the way forward and everybody then will tune into their natural abilities to become an entrepreneur. Because I believe people from the street are far more intelligent than any academia achieving um, degrees and put their mind to the, a legitimate product, they'll be 100% successful.